Hello all, welcome to SAP PEU online session. An introduction about myself. Uh, I am Sandra and uh, I have been with SAP for the past, uh, I have had SAP experience for the past nine years uh, and I have worked specifically on PEO for last four plus years. And um, you can have a look at my profile here. So this course uh, on, the, on the high level, it covers uh, the following aspects that you see, that is introduction to PEO, manufacturing engineering, manufacturing process planning, extended production operation, production monitoring, and PEO Fury apps. You can have a look at the uh, detailed agenda that we have here, uh, but as you can see for introduction of uh, PEO, we will cover uh, the uh, explained topics here and for manufacturing engineering we will in general cover the e-bombs uh, version bombs handover of e-bombs uh, model unit effectivity wbs network of the uh, major assembly installation kits that you see here uh, and again going to mrp creation of orders etc for manufacturing process planning, we will be covering the uh, process, uh, production process, uh, execution of production process, buy-offs, uh, shop floor routing, etc. That you see, manufacturing process planning. Uh, we have a few more items here. We will cover these as well. Extended production operation. We will cover the uh, production operators uh, part. Uh, in maybe share an integration on uh, PO to uh, MII. Uh, this part also we will cover production monitoring. Uh, we will uh, cover the as-built and genealogy application here. And we will also have a look at uh, most of the PO Fury apps that is being used. So this is our agenda for uh, this training. So today our focus would be on introduction of PEO. So we will have a, a idea on what PEO is, uh, you know, kind of have an introduction on this and an overview here. So maybe uh, since we are a small group, uh, everyone has given an introduction and uh, we have a huge range of experience uh, here, starting from uh, new colleagues to uh, experienced colleagues. So we will cover, uh, we will start with the basics and we will try to uh, cover the complex areas as well. Okay, so thank you for your introduction. And if you can continue seeing my screen. All right, um, so going to the introduction of PEO. So we will uh, cover what PEO is. We will cover the uh, SAP PEO key solution capabilities. Uh, we will see uh, the architecture of PEO. Uh, and the solution details of production engineering, production operations, and the PO apps uh, and its capabilities. We will just have an overview on these. So what is PO? So PO is, um, it provides you with features that require you to model the production process uh, in a more detailed manner and provides you with more detailed instructions for your production orders or production operators, and also um, verifies that the production uh, process has been executed properly. And all of these uh, modules, it, the, uh, it gets all the progress of the uh, data gets recorded in a more uh, innovative or in a more uh, efficient manner. So this, is kind of if you uh, ask the uh, you know a, a two liner for PO. This is what PO is, and um, PO module 
uh, is delivered as an extension of standard production planning uh, to cover the engineering and operation shop, op, shop floor operations during the shop floor execution. So uh, since major of you already have uh, experience in the PP area, um, PEO is an extension uh, of this. So PEO will basically have additional capabilities, uh, but the uh, base would uh, be uh, the production planning. It provides features that addresses the needs for the following roles, which is production engineer, production operator, production process specialist, production supervisor, and a quality engineer. So considering all these roles, uh, for all these roles, uh, what you know, we keep in a PO basically uh, starts from keeping in mind these roles and then uh, they have come up with the solutions to address uh, whatever gaps and issues were identified. So this is PO on a high level. What are its uh, key solution capabilities? It is a single holistic solution. Uh, basically created to bridge the gap between engineering and manufacturing. And it addresses the manufacturing complexities associated with uh, discrete manufacturing industries, um, mainly for the highly engineered products uh, like AD uh, automation or IM and C industries. So most of the current customers for uh, PEO are from the uh, aerospace and defense uh, area. So it is, uh, the focus is majorly for a high, uh, for the area which requires a highly engineered product. This is what uh, the capabilities of PEO are. If you look at this, um, so what do you see here? We have the S4 HANA, uh, the traditional uh, SAP S4 HANA. So this uh, PO kind of combines a lot of uh, features that is already existing or already provided by the S4 HANA. So uh, MRP, PPDS, uh, IMQM, all these are reused by PO. So this is the first uh, layer, which is part of PO. And then we come to the production engineering. Here, the product design is converted into production process. Uh, that is a common basis for production planning, order management, and execution. So this is the uh, second module in PO. The third would be production order management. Here, we uh, it's basically about initiating production by creating orders, monitoring the order progress, and managing the order changes. And then we come to the complex assembly execution. Here it is, um, it focuses on managing work queues, instructing operators, and recording complete uh, as built information. So, this is um, what PU is about, right? So, it basically, like I said, uses uh, S4 HANA capabilities and then combines all the other capabilities uh, to create a more seamless uh, flow of uh, engineering to manufacturing. So this is the um, architecture, if you can call it, uh, for PEO. So combining PPERP and the new execution layer in S4HANA. So if you look at uh, the PLM side, uh, you know, a company can have any PLM system, uh, for example, Siemens, Winchill, uh, whatever it may be, uh, that uh, data can be used in PEO using the PDMI integration, uh, which we will cover details of this uh, later. But for now, uh, this uh, just for your understanding. So the PLM we have uh, in a traditional PLM system, we will have bombs. We have the PMI data, uh, so everything can be everything can be uh, in uh, migrated. Uh, or Chandra, we lost you. Uh, Shreve, uh, can you hear Chandra? 
Yeah, we lost her for a couple of seconds. That's okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Can, can you okay. repeat that part, PDMI, PDMI part, please? Okay, so, um, yeah, so we have the traditional PLM system, uh, which could be Siemens, Winchell, uh, which would be anything. So the data from that can be used in PU uh, by the PDMI integration. So we will cover, uh, you know, details of that later, uh, but this is to give you a, a overview here. And if you look at the PEO section, so we again have a combination of uh, PP uh, or ERP uh, layer that is already uh, being used um, or already being uh, used by the S4HANA. So we have the EPOMs. Uh, it could be either created in the PO system, right? Or it could be uh, moved from. E bombs either way, and which will then con uh, get converted to the shop flow bomb using VMP. Uh, this is where VMP, uh, Visual Enterprise Manufacturing Planner, comes into picture. So here we create a shop flow bomb, uh, and we say shop flow bomb. There is a concept of having planning bomb and execution bomb. So it could be it's not just one M bomb. So it could either be a planning bomb or an execution bomb. And E bomb is an engineering bomb. So engineering uh, created, the design created by engineers can get handed over either directly for execution or for planning, right? So we can have two separate bombs here. And once we have a execution bomb finally, uh, which gets created, which then gets uh, moved to the shop flow routing. So to create a routing, we will use the execution bomb. And you can see in PO, uh, we have uh, the operation activities that you can see here. Uh, you know, it can have component assignment, inspection characteristics, interactive work instructions, qualification requirements, buy off, biops action handlers so all these are part of the shop flow routing and shop flow routing is a bit different to our traditional uh, routings that we have um, so we will be using a, spe a special uh, routing type for this and we will be using a special transaction also uh, in the sap system to create a shop flow routing and then uh, we the routing we can using the routing we can create uh, orders planned order then the shop floor order uh, and you can see uh, these are again the traditional aspects the MRP run etc that you see here so this is um, kind of the high level architecture of PO and what uh, what it can do so do we have any questions so far I have a couple of uh, clarification questions here. Number one thing is, you see, uh, this PDMI interface. So this PDMI interface is independent, or uh, do we need to go PDMI and EPE together? EPE is uh, that enterprise product engineering, or only PDMI is enough? Only PDMI is enough. Okay. Number two is related to these bombs, like you know, uh, the planning bomb uh, and the execution bomb. Is it again possible to make something purchasing bomb? Or the installation bomb? Uh, no, we cannot have. Uh, we can have only engineering bomb, planning bomb, or the execution bomb. It is okay. possible to have an option of combining planning and execution, but uh, these are then only the four options that we will have. And where, where exactly the PS uh, will uh, integrate here? The project system. In case uh, the uh, the assemblies are getting manufactured in the in a company in a manufacturing unit and then it should be uh, transported to uh, to the to the installation place and yeah. then some sort of installation uh, connectivity connection to that uh, manufacturing or planning bomb or engineering bomb mm -hmm. where exactly it can be done uh, yeah so we will maybe cover it uh, going forward so we do have a concept of in 
uh, you know, adding installation kits here and maybe creating the project itself is done a little uh, different. The hierarchy will of or the structure will of course stay the same, but it will be done a bit different. So we will cover this uh, going sure. forward. Uh, okay. Any other questions? Yeah, Sandra. Uh, can you please explain about uh, VAMP? So VMP, um, it is Visual Enterprise Manufacturing Planner. The main fun uh, feature of this is uh, to hand over the EBOM to MBOM. So we have uh, EBOM, right? So you, it can get handed over using, uh, you, we create planning scenarios, um, uh, right? To plan uh, the MBOM more efficiently. So when you're handing it over to MBOM, of course, you will have changes to the already created EBOM. Maybe a few additions uh, are required or changing the whole, maybe you will change the whole structure. There are a lot of features within VMP, but the main goal is to hand over the EBOM to MBOM. And finally, a MBOM gets created. So as the name suggests, uh, it's a visual enterprise manufacturing planner, which means it will have uh, visual models uh, you know, it will have the capability to display visual models. So the 3D models that get displayed should be in a specific format. Uh, it could be a VDS, RH, uh, etc. Uh, but it should be in a specific format and only then the uh, visual components will get identified. So we will have the visual uh, aspect of it displayed and we will be able to plan our MBOM more efficiently. So, so yeah say, sorry, sorry so you mean to say the bomb will uh, will consist of uh, the drawings and other uh, documents within it uh yeah when you say drawing it will not have the cat uh, file kind of drawing but what you see below uh, you can see this if you can see my cursor yes, yes. yeah so yeah it will be a 3d model which will be displayed Okay. So yes. you need to convert. The file will be stored in the uh, bomb in the inbox, right? Yes. So we need to, uh, yeah, it will be linked to the mbomb. Before that, of course, we need to create a document and link the file, which again we will cover a bit later. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So the okay. files, 3D files, uh, every instances. So of course it will be broken down into instances and bombs, uh, right? So every instances will be linked to the mbomb. Yeah, uh, Sandra, uh, a quick question. So uh, you told that uh, it will be exploded, right? Uh, it, it's kind of a explode scenario. Uh, when you finish a model, you will explode and it will be converted into a bomb. Actually, the three D model. So that is actually uh, transforming into the M bomb in a VEMP, right? Uh, yes. So what do you mean? Uh, we are exploding and converting to e bomb. I didn't get that. Part. Yeah. Uh, when when you do a 3D model, uh, you're exploding to get a bomb. Okay. So that is yeah, called e bomb. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that particular visual uh, experience you'll have uh, if there is any additional uh, parts to be uh, added it in m bomb, right? So that is uh, the functionality here. Yeah, but you will not. Yeah. Yeah. If you already have a bomb link to a visual you can add it of course uh, it will be seen you can also have non-visual i mean yeah it's not only about the visual aspect in vmp we can also have non-visual components uh, okay. but you're right whatever uh, is in epom will eventually get handed over to the mbom okay uh, and, uh, i can see there is uh, additional information like simulation results so is this related to the uh, analysis they do before uh, the uh, designing so that can be inputted into a uh, shop floor or bomb like m bomb so can you uh, um, give a small info about that yeah so the simulation result is basically in vm it's specific to vmp here you do not have to uh, without saving the vmp you can create a simulation um, you can basically simulate the slave right so in vmp there are a lot of checks that happen and even before uh, saving it you can simulate it so that you know if that is actually what you want to create so it will not create any mbom but it will just simulate the uh, creation basically in the back end it is doing all the checks because vmp is a little bit more complex which combines a lot of 
checks basically and of course your mbom can be pretty long so which is why the simulation has been uh, put here so it the idea is without creating the mbom you can simulate and check if your creation is fine or if there are any major issues that will come up yeah okay i got it uh, thank you yeah. any other so, uh, can these uh, simulations uh, can be saved simulation yeah simulation i mean if you click on the simulation uh, create simulation it will not save but once you are convinced okay this is what i want to proceed with then you can save the planning scope which will then create the mbom okay okay yeah uh, it is not like that i can create a different uh, simulations and then select one to yeah one for mbom uh -huh. it is not like that no no no, okay. no okay. it is not like that no. okay for that, you will have to, for what you're explaining, you will have to do, you'll have to create different planning scenarios so that you can finally see, okay, I want to proceed with this and you can, uh, you know, create. Yeah, we will cover this also. Yeah. And one more part here, um, the PLM systems mentioned here. So only uh, mm -hmm. those limited systems have got connection using PDMA to SAP or can we include some other system also? For now, it is mentioned three, Siemens and Dassault and yeah. Winchill. Uh, what about if it is not Siemens, Dassault, Winchill, if it is, let us say, uh, AutoCAD 3D or it is uh, SolidWorks? So whatever system you're using, if that can, if that supports the PDMI integration, then of course you can continue. But it depends on what PLM system you're using. Okay, one more complexity in case, let us say, I'm sorry, uh, in case, let us say, if, the, uh, if any of the system is there, but again, PDMI integration might uh, also have the license. You know, let, let us say mm -hmm. the, uh, the PDMA itself is not there. So let us say the uh, wind chill or Siemens is there, but without PDMI. So in that case, what is the way to integrate? Yeah, okay, right now PDMI is uh, required um yeah without this i can check and get back to you sure, what thanks. is the process yeah. sandra is there any formats that uh, demand for this pdmi like uh, from plm that there needs to be a format in which the bombs yeah. are transferred right yeah so um there is a concept called snapshot so what you see here the epom uh, section so this is what we kind of had initially but uh, when we are uh, using pdmi integration it will be uh, moved uh, or it will use the snapshot format so that again we will cover it as a separate topic but the snapshot will have a specific structure defined there okay yeah, so everything will kind of get combined into a snapshot. So all the uh, e-bombs, maybe the PMI data, visual data uh, documents, we will have a, a good structure. So we will we had to have a format of how the structure should be defined. And uh, that is how, uh, you know, we can use the PDMI here. Uh, so we will again cover this a bit later. So we it was kind of, the snapshot is uh, kind of introduced from the uh 2020 release so from there uh, we will be able to use these snapshots okay okay yeah. this uh, shop floor bomb uh, will it be multi-level uh, like uh, the traditional bomb yeah yeah so okay. what you see here yeah. you have a header you can have we have two sub assemblies here you could have a number of sub assemblies you know uh, sub assemblies under that and components finally the instance level component will be available that means uh, corresponding uh, level e, e bomb gets converted into shop floor bomb each level gets converted into shop floor bomb correct uh, yeah so here if you look at the example that is shown here right so yeah. i have a header then maybe yes. i have one two three, three four uh, four sub assemblies but yes. maybe when it it's coming uh -huh. here i have only two so there is an option of having a plan as design so i could either just move as it is as the e bomb as it is to the m bomb or i could you know make changes however i want uh, i mean there are again a lot of 
not lot of but ah, okay you you introduced uh, something in this example yeah, i see yeah. like a phantom so yeah for phantom or maybe an installation kit was introduced here uh, mm -hmm. right so which is why we kind of have a different structure so yeah there are a lot of again features here so there is a check which happens saying that i cannot move a uh, a component from this hierarchy i cannot just take this and put it here so there is also hierarchy check which happens but if it is within the uh, checks then yeah maybe i, I could inst uh, have an installation kit here and move few of my uh, assemblies under that and things like that so yeah so to, just to summarize we could either have a plan as designed just move the e bomb as it is or uh, you could uh, plan it according to uh, however the uh, in the manufacturing or execution side is required yeah do we have any other questions Uh, can you show, tell something about uh, shop floor routing? Uh, uh, the, is this uh, using additional tables? Like, you know, uh, we are thinking about the impact. Like, we have old routings. Now, we do we need to populate additional tables, uh, use uh, new LTMC formats or anything like that? I'm just thinking about the data migration point of view yep. for the future. Yeah, so yes, this does use a different table uh, because we do have few um, specific PO specific, uh, uh, what do you say, activities that is introduced here. Yes. Yes. But uh, uh, from the migration point of view, PO offers a, a migration report. Uh, okay, so one thing, okay, you have a good question. So before we go there, uh, let me come back to this e bomb part. The e bomb and m bomb that I just discussed about will be of are going to be versioned, so it will not be the traditional uh, bombs that we have been using, right? So we will again talk more about this later. But you will have a different type of uh, uh, e bomb. For each alternative, we can have different versions. Yes. Yeah, and the type also you will have to create a new type. We cannot use a traditionally maintained type. And similarly, it it is hold uh, true. It holds true for the routing. It lo you'll have a different type. So we have PO offers a, a migration report, uh, which will uh, migrate all the uh, traditional bombs and routings to the uh, PO specific bombs and routings. But this will, is not an application. It's more of a body which has to be implemented. Yeah, so, so basically the, this uh, journey is happening from uh, yeah, bomb usage uh, to to yeah. p and then v correct yes so if you're using the migration report the yeah. uh, moment will be from uh, bomb usage maybe 2 to e and after that we will take it over within uh, vmp or pu I hope that answered your question. Yes. yes. If there are any more questions, you can ask now. All right. So, yeah, we will cover um, a detailed explanation about every aspect going forward. So, uh, majorly, this will be uh, divided into production engineering and production execution. So if I look at uh, the solution details for production engineering. So firstly, uh, to understand what is the process involved in PO from the manufacturing engineering side. So if you look at the diagram here, uh, PO could receive bombs uh, new or the changed bombs from either a PLM system like we discussed or it could be created directly in the PO system. Uh, 
when we are creating it from the external uh, system, you will also have the master data uh, linked to it, which will also have to get uh, moved to the uh, PO system. So here um, that you see, we could either have the external PL, uh, PLM system or the manage bomb. So all the uh, boxes in probably dark blue is the Fury applications that we have in PU. So the manage bomb is one uh, such application, which means maybe a new customer can directly create uh, bombs in the PU. They will not be creating it from the uh, PLM system. Or you could have a PLM integration. Either way, we have our bombs getting created. And this is the uh, E bomb and the M bomb. Uh, so I could create my e bomb the engineering bomb or i could create directly my uh, manufacturing or the execution bomb i wouldn't have to create my e bomb so both the possibilities are available and like i said when i talk about m bomb we have um, firstly it is going to be versioned um, and we have a, a separate uh, type which will, we will have to create for PO. So in traditional system, it would be a one and two, uh, which will be the engineering and the production bomb. But here it will be E for engineering and P for uh, planning and um, E for execution. And like I said, we can also combine planning and execution. Uh, into one scenario. So instead of creating separate planning bomb and sec separate execution bomb, we will create one bomb, which would be P and uh, E. It could be anything, for example, V. And uh, we will say this is the planning and execution bomb. So there are E bomb is direct, but for M bomb, we do have uh, different possibilities. And um, like I mentioned, we will have or PU majorly focuses on the versioned bombs. So versioned bombs are something uh, which was introduced by PU. Uh, so what does versioned bombs mean? Uh, traditionally, we use the uh, traditional bombs. They are called the date effective bombs. So they use a certain date to track uh, changes, dates or the change numbers to track changes that is made in every bomb. But in PO, we are just moving one step ahead and saying, uh, you know, that would be the traditional way. But going forward, we will create versions. So versioning is uh, kind of the common concept which you might understand. So we will create, say, a bomb of version one. I'm saying, okay, this is created, and there are different status that uh, I can set. Of course, when I create, it will be new. Then it will go to in process. And once all the changes are done, I say, OK, this is finalized and I release it. So this is my version one. Uh, and then I identify, OK, there are more changes required. So I will create a copy of the last version and I will create my uh, version two and I make some changes. So and now I'm not releasing my version two. So what is the uh, use of having such versions now when i create when the e-bomb or the engineer uh, design engineer creates a version one okay he let's say creates kind of a draft and version one is what will get moved to the uh, execution side so the m-bomb who uh, may be some uh, you know colleague who's working on the m-bomb will get the version one and once the e-bomb uh, makes some changes in version 2 and they release it, only then will the m-bomb uh, receive the new version. So every time there is a confirmed and released version, it gets updated in, the, in all of the downstream applications as well. So always the latest version will get picked. So you are kind of bridging the gap where, uh, you know, maybe the ng uh, there is no uh, link between what changes engineer is doing and what the execution side is doing. So that gets uh, kind of bridged by uh, just picking up the latest uh, available uh, version. So only when it is released, that means, OK, it is confirmed and released. And of course, we have the concept of uh, alternates. 
um, alternates could be um, I am creating a version one, but that will always be for alternate one. Versioning would mean that we are making small minor changes. Maybe I'm, uh, you know, changing some uh, definition. I'm changing some quantity. Uh, you could make major changes, but I'm talking about in the maybe real time scenario. It will be minor changes when you're creating an alternate. Alternate means a new a new uh, variant, uh, right? So you will be making a major change. So maybe you are just deleting a couple of components and you're adding a couple of components. So you or you're changing the hierarchy. So you're making a major change. Uh, that is when an alternate gets created. So alternate again, versioning is specific for each alternate. So alternate one will have version one, two, three and alternate two could also have version one, two, three. So that is kind of how the e bomb is uh, or the bomb management happens in PEO. We will uh, look into the application later to kind of see how exactly uh, we can go about that. But uh, that is the bomb management. Any questions until now? All right. Sandra, one question here. Mm -hmm. How the synchronization will happen between uh, the PLM and the PEO? Now, any changes happening in terms of alternate or in terms of version? Will it be reflected back into PLM, or uh, or uh, there will be something you know we should we, which we should do manually? Uh, so the concept of snapshots that I was talking about. So when we have snapshots uh, when or when we use snapshots, the synchronization kind of happens automatically. So snapshot snapshot will contain the hierarchy of, of what is coming in and whatever is getting changed, it will kind of record it. So you can send it back to the your external uh, PLM system as well. So here through we can use PDMI, the, through PDMI, yes. okay. through PDMI, yes. So we can use the in from PO side, we can use the snapshot uh, to kind of synchronize between the PLM systems or the external systems. Okay, thank you. So uh, the, this uh, change replications, uh, the, uh, is it a standard features or uh, do we need to do any settings? Change replication that is the snapshot? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, we will cover this uh, the snapshot uh, replication uh, settings. Yeah, we will cover this part. Okay. All right. So uh, what you see here, manage unassigned e bombs and manage unassigned m bombs. So these are again two uh, separate applications that we have. So whatever e bombs and m bombs are getting created, uh, when you say unassigned, it is not assigned to a change record. Uh, we will. This is what the change record is. So in this application, you will be able to view the e bombs and m bombs that is not assigned to a change record. So whatever you're creating newly will by default not be assigned to any change record. So you can view it here and you can assign it to your change record. Uh, so that is where these applications are used. Uh, this is, uh, let's say, when we are having, uh, when we are creating new bombs, some, this is something that we use, but this is kind of optional. We can also uh, skip this part. It's not a mandatory step. This can be done directly in the manage bomb application also. So coming to the change record part, um, here all the to record all the changes, uh, you know, we use the change record. So all the bombs, routings, uh, materials, production orders, uh, whatever you're creating, what all the new uh, releases, alternates, all the changes that you make. Once you assign the initial assignment, you have to do, of course, uh, say the initial assignment from the EPOM, you'll have to assign to one change record after that whatever changes you're doing to that particular e-bomb 
it will get linked to all of the downstream processes that you see. So all of this will get recorded in the change record. So this will kind of become your uh, single uh, source of truth where you can go and see what are the changes happening, what uh, modifications have been done or what things have been newly created. You can uh, monitor everything via the change record. So these are the artifacts that you see bomb routing materials and production orders. We also have uh, uh, snapshots, documents and few more uh, uh, new features that you uh, will see in the latest releases. And for this, we use the manage change record application. This is the app that we uh, use. Um, so this is not specific to PU. It could be uh, used for a non PU application as well. But uh, this is the application that you use. One of the major advantage here is since all the artifacts are getting uh, kind of recorded and all the changes are getting recorded, you will be able to uh, analyze the impact that every change is making, uh, that every change will have to the downstream processes. So for this, you can use the change impact analysis application that you see here. Uh, what it does is say, I've already created my EBOM, MBOM routing and a production order. But now I go back and I make some change to my MBOM. I create, so that is possible, right? So you create a new uh, MBOM version and you're making some change. You are uh, uh, changing some quantity for some component. So it in the change impact analysis app, it will show because of this change that you've made, what are the applications that will get impacted? Uh, so maybe for that particular component, you have created a routing and there is no production order. So it will show you which routing is getting impacted. So it will not show maybe uh, what are the impacts going forward, but it will say for this change, these applications are getting impacted and it will be your call on what if you want to make if you want to take an action or not so that you, you is, may not with this with this app we are going to put the production orders on hold sorry or production if, order yeah see i'm changing the bomb correct and yeah. this bomb is going and sitting in my multiple places like like you said it is being used in production orders also yes yes so before the start of production orders, can I, uh, using this app, can I hold those uh, production orders? No, we cannot make any changes or there are no actions that can be performed via this okay. app. This it is, is just, just an uh, analysis. Monitor. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Monitor. Okay. yeah. You cannot make any, uh, no actions can be taken uh, via this app. Okay. Uh, Till for um, for the change record and change impact analysis, do we have any questions? Okay. So we will. Uh, for change management, uh, are you are you going to have one slide on the change management? The change management uh, is handled via the change record. Yes. We will, okay. Uh, will there be any slide going forward? Yeah, yeah, we will cover this uh, topic uh, separately going forward. Yeah. So all the uh, topics we will cover separately. This is just to give you a high level overview. OK, so um, from the change record, so now you have your bombs. Uh, say you have created your e-bomb and you have assigned it to a change record. Now we will use the manufacturing. app to uh, create our mbombs and using the same app you can uh, add your routing which is why you see this link but before adding routing you need to create your routing which can be done via the uh, manage routing application so uh, here you see the 
application. This is a Fury application uh, that is indicated here. It can be either done by a Fury application or the backend transaction. Uh, but if you look at the bombs, since we are creating versioned bombs, it we cannot do it via the uh, backend application or the traditional bomb uh, creation transaction we, for the versioned bombs. You need to always use the manage bomb theory. So there, there, that means there is no GUI transaction. There's no GUI transaction for creating a versioned bomb. Even for routing source? No, for routing, we do have a GUI transaction for the yeah. shop flow routing. Yeah. OK, so we need to create our routing. Uh, we have our MBOM and we can create routing assigned components. You will see uh, most of the features that you saw before here, uh, which will kind of uh, be available here as well. Uh, and we have few new uh, uh, artifacts for the routing as well, which we will also cover. And uh, like I said, if you already have your routing created, you can also directly call it in your uh, VMP uh, where you're creating your MBOMs. And uh, you have your MBOM created, routing created. You can go ahead and create your production order. And we have the uh, production version app, which will production version is basically kind of linking, uh, creating a link between your bombs and the routing. So we have a managed production version app and uh, which will create the production versions and um, add your e-bombs and routings. Again, the production version app will consider the versioning scenario here and, uh, you know, uh, help you add the latest versions to your uh, production version. So this is the manufacturing engineering process uh, that we have, and this is kind of the overview. So till here, do we have any questions? Uh, I have one question. Let's say, for example, like you said, I have created a new uh, MBOM version. Now I found, OK, there are some production orders with a older version. So uh, how do I how do I update those uh, production orders with the uh, latest uh, production version, which is having uh, uh, new MBOM version and a routing combination? Is there any mass uh, uh, transaction available or app available? No, uh, currently there is nothing available as such. Uh, we could do our MRP run, which will uh, kind of identify. But if something is already created, but no, there is no mass uh, transactions available right now. Yeah, that means we have to update a single, single, like in yeah. uh, GUI. We used to yeah, do yeah. read PP master data. Uh, mm -hmm. Similar fashion we are, we are supposed to do, right? For the yes. existing orders. Okay. Yes, yes, true. Sandra, will it not be taken care as a change impact analysis? Uh, no, like I said, we cannot make any changes from the change impact analysis. You can just analyze or monitor what what will be impacted, but we cannot make any act or you cannot do any actions from the application. Now let us take the case where another production order is released. Mm -hmm. Same uh, example of Pawan. Yeah. Now okay. let us say the production order is also released and there are changes coming up in the M bomb. Let us say, mm -hmm. for example. Now mm -hmm. the change uh, impact analysis shows uh, if this bomb is going to be changed. So uh, let us say there are five production orders which will be impacted out of five. Two are released on it. OK. OK, and now when it is not released, it is in the create mode. Then uh, in the production order that read PP master data, that function is there and through that we can read the new uh, production version <coughs> also. But mm -hmm. in case of uh, those two production order which are already released, uh, then uh, yeah, when uh, might be it is possible it is partly executed or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I get your point, uh, but right now this probably may be still an existing gap, but this is not handled uh, in PU. 
Mm. So you can just see that this is affected, but you cannot do anything post that. Yeah, it, it uh, normally happens in the uh, industrial scenario. Say, for example, I have a, uh, I have a M bomb, and then now uh, I realized uh, there are some uh, lot of uh, customer feedbacks coming. So in some cases, of course, I will uh, recall the products. At the same time, mm -hmm. uh, I know there is an impact. So I also know, OK, I have to, you know, replace this part by this plot or I have to uh, change the design. So that is why I'm creating a new MBOM version. But in the meanwhile, what is happening is if your production is not stopping, right? Uh, during yeah. the call or any other thing, the production is. So in that case, you may find the hundreds of orders, uh, production orders. You using the similar kind of part and uh, and those bombs are using similar uh, components. So um, that is where yeah. a user user is going to look for a comfort level. How I can change uh, in mass? Yeah, mm -hmm. just thinking about it. I got your point. I will uh, maybe do some R&D and see um, okay. if there is something, but right now, as far as I'm aware, uh, this is not handled, but yeah. I will uh, get back to you on this if I find there's an existing solution in PU. It, uh, I also, uh, long ago when uh, 1610 was uh, um, uh, introduced, you know, mm -hmm. Uh, there used to be one app which says, OK, when I'm handing over E-bomb to M-bomb, uh, when I do the impact analysis, uh, system is giving me the list. But at the same time, there is one app which is saying uh, I can hold the production orders. See, for example, I have a, you know, production orders in release status, created status. So I am preventing my operator don't use these production orders because I'm going to you know, change these bombs. Can you identify that app? Which yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll do that. So you did yeah. you say that when you're using this impact analysis app, that is yes, where yes. you saw it? Yes, yes, that okay. is where I saw. Yeah, in and around that one only. It will say uh, these are the production orders. Now you can also go and change and put them on hold. The, there will be a new status on hold. So that the operator or the scheduler who is uh, uh, taking uh, those production orders, they will they will be alerted saying that hey, these are the production orders which are on hold. The reason is uh, this bomb is getting changed. Now let us wait, but take all other production orders which are uh, in the release status. OK, so, so that here... facility is being provided by uh, this uh, app, I think. Uh, uh, there or this app or uh, another uh, you know app which is a which is actually controlling that status i don't know uh, you have some time please find it out yeah yeah so this change impact analysis it will kind of navigate to all the other apps most of the apps that we see here right yeah, that uh, means it is interactive the, yeah it is so yeah it will uh yeah it is interactive so it will there are no actions that can be done in this specific app but mm -hmm. it will take you to other apps say that one artifact i have with auto then it will take me to the production order change management uh, probably here so i uh, assume that this is probably where you must have seen but i will also check on this and i i will confirm this okay so this is a manufacturing engineering process and uh, if there are no more questions uh, i think we can take a short five minute break uh, just refresh and get back in five minutes so it is 10 5 now so 10 10 we will get back so we covered the manufacturing engineering process in peu so just uh, to give you uh, the capabilities of uh, individual uh, areas under production engineering. So what uh, uh, just a sample image that you see, this is how your VEMP uh, will look like. So uh, I hope you can see my cursor here. What you see on the left hand side is uh, the e-bomb and it's related uh, uh, visual file. So there are three panels which you will get in VMP. One is the source panel, the target panel and the working panel. 
source will be uh, whatever is being fetched. So in this scenario, it will be the EPOM. The target will be whatever is being planned. So the MBOM, but when you're planning something, you will be making some changes also. So that you will move it to the working panel and then only in the working panel, you will be able to edit. And uh, once all the changes are done, once you commit, it will move to the target panel. So this is uh, just the sample of how a VMP will look like. Um, so this uh, bomb management with visual enterprise manufacturing planner, the uh, just to identify what are the capabilities here, uh, the major uh, feature is enhanced manufacturing collaboration, utilizing the uh, digital twin, which would be the uh, viewer and the uh, planner part of it. The capabilities are enables handover of engineering structure to manufacturing structure, supports 3D model based visual handover, uh, quantity based non visual handover and hybrid scenarios, meaning uh, we can it's not only about the visual part, but we can also have non visual a bomb which is entirely non visual that can also be handed over in VMP or we use that uh, we use VMP to hand over the non visual part as well and we can have hybrid scenarios meaning for uh, a non visual or a visual scenario we will have few non visual components as well so that is also supported here and facilitates a component allocation to routing operation. So like I mentioned before, you can, if you already have your routings created, you will be able to uh, call them here and uh, assign them to the component. So these are uh, some of the capabilities, but if you look into bomb management is uh, quite straightforward, but if you look into the visual uh, enterprise manufacturing planner, <clears throat> the specific features here, it has a lot of features. Uh, for example, in the source bomb, I have my structure and say I make some changes to the quantity. So there is uh, you kind of identify what are the primary attributes, the secondary attributes, uh, primary would would be self-explanatory, which is the uh, main uh, attributes of any component. So it depends on the item category level, which we will cover later. But say I make any changes to my primary attributes or secondary attributes for any component uh, in the target, right? So now in the target, the uh, attributes or the values that I have is different from what is available in the source. So this each uh, minute details are also uh, tracked in VMP. So now if it is different, you will get a warning message saying that there has been some change and what you, what they see in the source and the target is different. So either this could be something intentional that is done from the end user. So they see the warning message and they can ignore it. But if it is not intentional, then there is an option to uh, kind of, it's called reconciliation, the, the concept. So it will show what are the changes that is, uh, that is being made. And you will have an option to either uh, keep the change as it is, that is the changes made to the M bomb will remain as it is, or you can revert the change. So the revert change meaning uh, whatever uh, changes are there in the source bomb that will be retained. So uh, there are a lot of reconciliation features here um, in VMP, which uh, is which is pretty useful, uh, you know, in identifying the changes being made. So these are the uh, capabilities of uh, and bomb management and visual enterprise manufacturing planner. So going forward um, for production process planning, uh, the main feature is reduced cost and time via simplified processing and enhanced user experience. Capabilities would be defined production process on operation and operation activity level. So we have a operation activity level uh, specific for, for PU where you can uh, define uh, the operation or uh, there are a detailed 
detailed at artifacts under the operations as well. Allocate bomb items with 3D visual support in routing creation. Again, the visual bombs uh, can be allocated here for the routing. Define all production relevant aspects like the tools, inspection, certifications, buyouts. Uh, there are a lot of aspects here which can be defined. Author work instruction with links to items in 3D model and BOM. Uh, the work instructions can be authored. Supports many new features like, again, activities, work instructions, buy-offs, certifications, change alerts, and etc. So this uh, are the capabilities of production process planning. Manufacturing change management, uh, the main uh, feature here is enhanced production flow by proactively minimizing production disruptions. So like I mentioned, we will have a seamless flow in the uh, change management here. The change management is done via the uh, majorly the uh, change record and the uh, versioned bombs, right? So this provides a seamless flow and it is not zero dis production disruptions, but it will minimize the production uh, disruptions. So the capabilities are change record keeps all the manufacturing artifacts in the change cycle together, which we uh, saw or which we discussed. Version controlled bomb and shop floor routing helps better control the process plant setup to be uh, used for production. So uh, again, like we discussed, uh, the version the version concept will kind of uh, control the pro uh, process plan uh, until it reaches the production. Display new or modified engineering bombs waiting for manufacturing handover as a work list. So uh, the new or modified bombs uh, can be uh, displayed as work list before it gets handed over to the uh, manufacturing. That is if it is in the in-process state. Change impact analysis identifies objects, all objects potentially impacted by change and uh, take action. This is uh, something where you can navigate to different applications and uh, you know uh, see what has to be done there. Uh, but within the change impact analysis, you will be able to uh, identify the uh, impact being done by the change. Orchestrates changes between individuals and departments using workflow. So uh, the change record is itself, uh, uh, it uses the workflow concept to, uh, you know, or, uh, to kind of uh, orchest orchestrate the change between uh, departments. So the workflow is used uh, within the change record. All right. So these are the capabilities of three uh, major areas. Are there any questions uh, until now? Uh, one question on change impact analysis in the manufacturing production process and uh, it is the last point, the final bullet point where it says you know, the workflow could also be used. Yes, orchestrated yeah. uh, changes between individual and department using workflow. How how uh, how many layers of workflow we can embed in? Uh, so we can have our own custom defined workflows as well. So the layers would be as you define it. So you, uh, the customer can define how the workflow want to be uh, should be set up. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And uh, we are yet to talk on the execution side of uh, the PEO. Anyways, we are yes. in the start. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so uh, having discussed all the capabilities of production engineering side, uh, all the aspects there. So what are the uh, use cases uh, that we can identify from this? First, mainly it is bridge the gap between engineering and manufacturing that uh, we have told. So here, uh, if you look at the use cases, versioned managed bombs 
uh, where every bomb version has its own release status a released bomb version is a consistent model of a product's component that can be used in production execution and that cannot be changed so this uh, version managed uh, bomb uh, handles uh, you know or can be used uh, as a use case here and we have uh, perform comprehensive impact anal uh, impact analysis to identify objects which are affected by the change and decide how to introduce the change. Uh, this is based on the impact analysis, uh, which we have discussed. Introduce changes from product engineering into manufacturing master, uh, which uh, we have again covered here. Change records control and document the change cycle. So uh, the change record basically documents all the changes that will be made and 3D visual support for bomb items and animated work instructions. So when we come to the work instructions, we can have animated work instructions as well. So uh, these are the uh, use cases of the production engineering. Moving on to production operations solution. Here, um, if you look at the image, uh, we have the production order with uh, the managed production order uh, or the production operations. This is the Fury application. And we have the production order here, which will have uh, different aspects like the operations activities uh, serial numbers so this is the production order that we will have uh, so here um, we will trigger work so the work can either be triggered by a work center or explicitly assigned to operators and accessed via personal work queues so we see that uh, we have my work queue application so the uh, work assigned can be accessed via the my work uh, queue application or we can assign the work using the assign uh, work application manage work center queue uh, this is explanatory this will help you to manage the work center queue and perform operation so here um, we can create defects we can hold defects uh, buy-offs can be initiated from the uh, perform operation activity or the worker ui uh, that we have so using this uh, uh, we will be able to create uh, uh, hold defects create uh, defects buy-offs etc all the information that will be gathered uh, when we are performing these activities, uh, including which includes, you know, holes, defects and buy offs are documented in the genealogy and the action log uh, part that you see here. So it will be documented on the serial number granularity. So serial number uh, is something that we will cover it when we are talking about genealogy and action log, but it will be uh, documented on uh, the granular, uh, the smallest granularity uh, level. And of course, when we talk about each uh, production holds defects buy-offs, we have uh, different applications to manage these as well. So this is uh, the process flow for production operations. Do we have any questions here? Can you uh, explain a little bit more about the buy-offs? Uh, yes, so buy-off, I think uh, it would be a separate topic. So I yeah. think we can uh, cover it uh, in detail. Uh, basically, what is the purpose of uh, buy-off? What kind of data we are going to uh, document? What kind of data? Uh, data or uh, operator, what what is doing using this buy-off? uh yeah i think uh if you is it like a would... operation confirmation or, uh, or something uh, like that? yes it is just on high this... level 
Yeah. yeah, it is on the similar uh, terms, uh, but I think you need to probably understand a bit. We might have to go back and you know talk about a lot of other things. So I think uh, we, it better we keep this on hold for now. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because we'll have to cover a lot of aspects yeah. to come. Here. So in the, in this flow diagram, you see that the production holds. Uh, so yes. uh, what is it uh, showing or it is showing like I started this production and uh, stopped for a while or uh, yeah. uh, that is the, is it showing a kind of a downtime or? Uh, so it could be for whatever reason, uh -huh. right? When, when you're creating itself, you decide to hold it or uh -huh. you hold it at this stage. It could be for uh, not a Missing downtime, material. but for, yeah. yeah. Yes, okay. it could be for any uh, end user specific reason. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So here again, uh, we will talk about the uh, specific uh, capabilities for each production operation uh, area for production order management uh, the main feature is improved accuracy and visibility via robust user interaction the capabilities are monitors production process either on order or on operation level automatically detects uh, exceptions or issues provides contextual information for root cause analysis and decision support provides immediate actions in response to operator or system updates. So these are the uh, capabilities that the production order management has. Work center queue management uh, main feature is maximizes operator and production efficiency by reducing bottlenecks. Capabilities are lists, uh, list all operations to be performed at a given work center. Supporters supports operators uh, to pick the next operation to be started based on the order or operation status or other factors which could be defined. Actively monitors all in process operations at the work center. So this is the work center queue management uh, capabilities. And for work process definition, uh, the main feature is reduce rework and scrap with detailed activities. Uh, capabilities would be perform and confirm activities on orders or on individual parts. Again, on the uh, serial number granularity. Uh, enforces ex execution and provides actions for reporting activity uh, progress and status. Supports integrated visual work instructions, maintains genealogy and action logs, manages BIOS. So these are the capabilities of uh, work process definition. So uh, if you now look at the use case of extended production operations, the main uh, factor here would be drive manufacturing efficiency and quality. So uh, PO uh, has a more efficient and uh, qualitative uh, manufacturing process here. If we look at the use cases, say for example, uh, you as a maybe a, a production supervisor uses the production holes to temporarily stop the execution of operation activities for selected work centers or materials or production orders. Uh, this means that uh, you can pause the execution of a material if your production engineer, uh, engineer is in the process of creating a new bomb or uh, routing version. This is what you were referring to when Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yes. exactly. Yeah. So this is one of the use case. Uh, true. Or you can stop production in a particular work center during uh, periods of maintenance. So this is uh, one of the use case that is handled here. This uh, uh, we will see how to bring it into action and you know uh, how to take it forward. Uh, so yeah, this is one of the use case. And let's say a 
production supervisor can check all the production orders within your area of responsibility. Uh, this can be done. You have to access a detailed information that show uh, production progress and you receive notification about the issues such as maybe uh, you have a missing component or, or your production is in hold or uh, uh, inspection characteristic is kind of uh, in a different range. So these issues uh, should be uh, or will be uh, identified and shown to a production supervisor. Issues are determined dynamically uh, supporting early detection. Therefore, you have a chance of to solve any problems uh, before it is, uh, you know, before it reaches the execution or it affects the end execution. And uh, this is kind of the second use case that we will have. And maybe a production supervisor uh, can put on hold while a uh, put a production order on hold while uh, and engineering changes are being made and then you can uh, ask the system to uh, reread the master data for the existing production order. So this can also be achieved. Uh, again, maybe if you look at a different end user, maybe uh, a production operator will have access to a detailed work instruction. So a detailed uh, end page like a, a HTML page. So you, they will have access to a detailed work instruction and 3D images, uh, which will support the recording of production progress, component consumption and inspection characteristics. So all these will be uh, detailed out and in a more uh, relevant or understandable 3D uh, images. And the perform operation activity app will check all the preconditions of an operation activity, such as the completion of a, a previous activity or the absence of holes. Uh, and they will make sure that the production pro process is performed as planned. So this is the perform operation activity uh, use case. And we have uh, enhanced capabilities uh, that are available for collecting data for serialized parts and batches. Uh, this data is used uh, for the genealogy and traceability purpose. So like we mentioned, the genealogy and action log will uh, record everything on the serialized granularity level, which can uh, later be used for the traceability purpose. The genealogy report and production action log shows which components are assembled into which uh, assembly, facilitating the root cause analysis and handling of defects. So these are uh, some of the use cases that the extended production operations have. If you look at uh, Okay, so we can also have a complex assembly. Uh, we can also have, which is probably not uh, mentioned in detail here, but we will again cover how to create a, a major assembly, add installation kits, right? So this will be, this is a complex uh, assembly project which will be created. Uh, and this also we will uh, cover in detail uh, in the coming class. Uh, you know, you'll have to create a material type for manage major assembly, installation kits, end items, and PO as a. So, in the traditional way, if you look at it, uh, we go to the backend, the GUI, and you have to kind of uh, create every kind of nodes. You'll have to create uh, or assign network activities, etc., which is kind of a more uh, complex process. But if you use the PEO application, uh, which is called Manage Major Assembly, here with just giving the header bomb, uh, you need to have your bomb uh, created beforehand, of course. But if you have the bomb created in the specific structure, uh, that is, you know, it should have a major assembly, end item, installation kit, and so on. So if you create a bomb, it will automatically create a project for you, and it will do all the required uh, 
assignments as well. So that would that is also uh, kind of handled in the PU. It makes the whole process a bit uh, simpler. So this also we will be covering going forward. OK, you mean to say uh, I have a possibility to select either a production order or a project system, correct? Yes, correct. Okay. Okay. This, yeah, we can do that uh, when we are covering uh, towards the end. Yeah. OK, so are there any questions so far? You you will be also uh, telling us, say, for example, what are what are the minimum, uh, you know, configuration or a system setup is required yes. to run uh, PU, PU, correct? Yeah. So, um, I mean, if we could have the system ready, we yes. could uh, together, you know, uh, go through and uh, make sure, uh, you know, we identify what are, or I could tell you what the configurations are should be maintained and yeah. i would request you to kind of go into the system and at least uh, one person can do it while the others kind of make sure they know what or where it should be maintained you have so, that uh, list of items to be performed or activities to be performed yes. uh, this is there in the presentation also uh not in today's but uh, but in the later yeah. it, it will yeah i will add it in the coming presentations yeah okay So we will have the, uh, uh, in order to access uh, Fury applications, we will need roles uh, to be added. Uh, that will, we will do, and we will also need to make sure few of the basic configurations or activities are maintained before we start off with uh, the PO. So we will uh, do all of that required. How right. how how well uh, PEO will handle uh, assemblies with uh, variant configurations? Uh, it will handle on the similar uh, level for as so process for the other won't box. be changing. Process will be the same, correct? Process will be the change, uh, same. same. It's just that instead uh, you will create a versioned bomb with variants. Okay. Right. So there is also, uh, like you said, variant configuration is one aspect, and there is also the aspect of unitization. Uh, so you can either have. So we will cover only the versioned bombs because it would make sense uh, in PO to uh, cover only the versioned bomb. Here, for versioned bombs, you can have unitized bombs or a variant uh, config bomb. So we will cover both the aspect. So uh, variant uh, configuration, as you might already be aware of, uh, this is uh, kind of available from before. So you can define the uh, variants on the uh, in the bomb uh, specific to each uh, item level, uh, which will be kind of used in the downstream applications as well, right? When you're creating your orders and everything. Uh, similarly, for the unitization, uh, which is uh, here it is called either unitization or parameter effectivity yes. uh, is the uh, word here. So in the bomb app, you'll be able to define effectivities for each item and uh, say, what does effectivity mean? It's kind of a number range that you define. So it means. Uh, yeah, either it is a date or a serial number or. Um, yeah, 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 just to kind of give you an example, uh, say yeah. I'm building an I'm an airplane manufacturer. OK, so and I'm, and I'm building an airplane, so I am building a fighter jet, for example, and my fighter jet will have, uh, let's say, one, uh, uh, I don't know, missile uh, launcher. OK, uh, so. Maybe some country wants me to have the missile launcher in their uh, fighter jet and some country does not. So when I'm manufacturing, how do I kind of differentiate it? Uh, so what we do is. Uh, so it will be the same order uh, or let's say the same country is placing an order and they say I want 10, uh, 
you know, fighter jets with missile and 10 without. So uh, here you can kind of define a number range, say I uh, say one to 10 in the effectivity and or one to 20 and one to 10 will uh, have the uh, missile in, uh, included in that and the 11 to 20 will not. So this, this is kind of on a high level, but it, when you go into the uh, instance level, you will have a lot of instances and you can give a lot of effectivities there. So this is kind of like a use case scenario. Uh, it is basically to identify which components should be uh, used going further. Uh, it is identified based on the effectivity that we give or the kind of a number range that we give. Uh, yeah, when we maybe go through it uh, and see how it is defined in the application, you will have a better idea of that. All right. Uh, so yeah, that is again something we will cover. Um, so coming to the SAP PO apps. So uh, again, if you divide it on the engineering, uh, production engineering apps and production operation apps, uh, under engineering, we have manufacturing change management, bomb management, production process planning. Under operations, we have uh, production order, production order management and control and complex uh, assembly execution. So these are kind of on a high level, how it will be uh, split. If you look at this image, uh, for the manufacturing change management, we have, uh, I will go through what we have already covered. So manufacturing change record, change impact analysis and bomb uh, or the routing uh, management app. What we have not covered is the, probably what we have not discussed is the monitor engineering snapshot. So uh, like I said, snapshot is a concept that is available from the, 2020 release. So we will cover snapshot in detail later. So we do have a specific application for that to monitor all these snapshots. And coming to the bomb management, we have uh, managed bomb apps and we have the visual enterprise manufacturing planner. So this is not a separate application. If you search for visual enterprise manufacturing planner in any theory uh, launch pad, you will not find this application. Uh, because this is kind of integrated with either the change record or the manage bombs. Uh, it will, it's not a separate application. Similarly, is similar is a case for change impact analysis. If you search for this, you will never find it. That is because it is always integrated in the change record. Only from the change record can you uh, access the change impact analysis uh, application. So these are not individual stand on applications. And uh, production planning, we have the manage shop flow routing, which will help you manage the uh, routing part. Uh, we have planning master data, templates, standard text, uh, manage standard. We have the same shop flow order app, production monitoring, production order change management, coming to the complex assembly execution. We have work assignment, work use, perform operation activities, uh, non conformance defect handling, tool usage, tracking, action log, and genealogy. So these are uh, the applications that we will be using going forward. Uh, here, maybe one thing which is not provided is the uh, manage major assembly application, which we will use to create uh, projects. So like a few of the things that we have already discussed, model unit effectivity is the uh, unitization data or the effectivity parameter effectivity that I was talking about. The major assembly and installation kit is uh, the complex uh, uh, assembly project uh, creation uh, part that we spoke about. Reference designator is something which we will also cover. So this can be a reference designator can be assigned in the VMP uh, for any bombs uh, that we need. Variant configuration is also something which we'll do. This assembly, uh, this assembly would mean that a uh, 
a component or an assembly can be disassembled or it can be let's say assembled so when it's assembled uh, is an assembly so the same thing can be disassembled into individual uh, instances so this also we will see and then we have the product manufacturing information or the pmi uh, data which is kind of coming from the 3d file so this can also be covered so yeah this is uh, all the uh, applications that we have right now and we will cover in detail in the upcoming this, uh, uh, product uh, manufacturing information is, is it a kind of a reporting tool or no no it is actually just uh, a data which comes in the 3d file so this okay. data should be defined in the file right okay. uh, by whoever is maybe preparing the cat file so it comes along with that all right uh, so this is uh, this covers uh, or this gives kind of the overview of pu and this covers the high level aspects of pu and what it is capable of doing so do we have any questions uh, until here for for today uh, what is the file format which should be input to for uh, engineering bomb from plm it, it should not be cad that's what you said yeah yeah it should not be cad uh, so vmp will support uh, vds and rh are uh, two majorly used uh, formats that it will support uh, but yeah cad will not be supported Okay. And again, uh, these two VDS and RH uh, should only be from uh, the now. Let us say, I mean, in the very first slide, it was said uh, wind chill, Siemens, uh, and assault. Only from th these three PLMs, the file generated in the form of VDS RH supported, or it could be from any PLM. Uh, so this file can be generated from anywhere, right? So this is basically done by the Visual Enterprise Author tool. Mm -hmm. uh, so if it is already available in the PLM system, yes, uh, but this file can be generated uh, from anywhere. Okay. And one more thing there. Um, uh, this file tab was there. Uh, and see the engineering bomb and the manufacturing bomb. I mean, uh, this is what again we, we have uh, had this situation two times wherein the customer says what is the difference between engineering bomb and uh, the uh, the production or manufacturing bomb so it, it, it seems in the, the planning bomb and manufacturing bomb is clear so those who are in cpg and other industries they know very well the uh, the planning bomb and the manufacturing bomb but well, two instances we have seen, you know, the, the customers are not very comfortable with this engineering bomb and manufacturing bombs. So uh, okay. now let us see if uh, the people are not comfortable and they say, no, 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 let us stick to one engineering bomb only alone. So how uh, the, the functionality is being implemented? So uh, I think then the customer would say, let's if they're saying let's stick to one bomb, then you would stick to the M bomb, right? You will okay. not have the, so you will, yeah. So, in, yeah, engineering bomb will be then removed. So you will have only the M bomb in place, uh, the manufacturing bomb. So from manufact, if you already have the manufacturing bomb, you will have you can skip the E bomb to M bomb handover path, and then you can continue with the rest of the uh, modules here. And what about uh, this installation kit? These installation kits are linked to manufacturing bomb, or is it linked to engineering bomb? Uh, it could be anyhow. Mm -hmm. Okay, and one final question from my side is this. Uh, now let us say the installation kits are maintained in the product system. Now let us say the uh, PP production planning is also there and uh, and uh, PS product system is also there. Okay, mm -hmm. and now let us say you see uh, uh, th there are certain uh, the, the installation has to happen and out of that entire full manufacturing uh, assembly to be installed uh, some of the parts to be shipped uh, to the customer installation site in advance so how how can, can it be taken care should it be taken care in ps or should it be taken care in peo mm -hmm. this is something that i'll have to check okay, yeah. okay. okay. I will check on this and get back. Yeah, sure, please. Okay, thank you. <clears throat>
you you mean uh, uh sandra uh, situation is like this our uh, drawing is showing complete product but it is uh, delivered in parts meaning certain assembly becomes a uh, one sales order item and the second uh, maybe kits second sales order items uh, it is like that so this this is uh, that means the assembly is uh, delivered in uh, part by part um like the embalm is saying the whole uh, sm to make this whole product uh, this is the structure we need you understood mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i got it i will uh, check on this and get back and one thing here uh, where exact peo will work very well is it make to order is it make to stock is it assemble to order i mean with what scenario uh, this works very well well, I would say make to auto, but um, if you ask me what PO is saying, uh, like SAP PO, then this I will have to check again here. Uh, mostly, it will come under uh, detail. Yeah, go. Please, yeah, please, please go ahead. It, uh, I think this comes under ETO. Yeah, engineer to order kind of thing. Yeah, right? yeah. So between MTO to ETO, we should uh, recommend this one. Yes, yes. And referring to one example, uh, Sandra, I know uh, that uh, fighter jet you mentioned 10 with missile launcher, 10 without missile launcher. So in that case, uh, the lot size of 20 in this case, one production order with lot size of 20 can be managed with uh, unitization. 10 okay. units uh, for uh, and with uh, missile launcher, 10 without missile. So it is not uh, again mandatory to have the lot size of one in the production order. We can have more than one as a production order quantity as well. Yes, yeah, you can. So the production order quantity will also kind of get picked from the uh, unitization when you, you you have to give a unit uh, effectivity value when you're creating orders. So your quantity will get picked from that as well. Again, we can see that going forward. You mean I can do from, uh, let us say my running serial number is 100. From 100 to 105, I can use uh, two missile launchers. And uh, then six to hundred and ten, I will use only one missile launcher. Is it possible? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Within yeah. the same production order. Within the same production order, it is not possible. Uh, it if should be different it. production order. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because the bomb version is a uh, different. Bomb version could be the same, right? POM version could be the same. The effectivity values will be different. OK, yeah. then we are going further down. Yeah. Do the version, the effective values. Again, unitization in this case, unitization is uh, much more helpful compared to variant configuration. Yes. yes. Yeah, I would say so, yes. Well, variant configuration execution is very, very complicated. A lot of custom reports are required. All right, uh, so we can cover uh, in detail going forward. And if we have the system ready tomorrow, we will look into the uh, setup part of it. So yeah, this is all from my side for today. Thanks for watching the video. Please hit the bell icon below. If you haven't already, please follow our Instagram channel by clicking on the channel icon on the top.